Today I'm going to show you what it's like going on an urban portrait shoot with me. Roll the intro. Yep, we have an intro, that's the intro, what do you think? You like it? I do. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's your favourite Asian vampire, Nicholas here, back at it again with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you what it's like behind the scenes on one of my photo shoots so that you know what's going on in my head and what I try to keep in mind when I'm shooting. I'll be showing you behind the scenes clips as well as giving you tips on how to get unique and interesting perspectives, as well as how I manage to pose anybody and make them look good and organic on camera, no matter who they are. That being said, Let's prepare our camera bag and head on down to Dallas. Today's behind the scenes is from one of my recent favorite shoots featuring Jordan Abernathy. Here are five tips you can use to instantly improve your shoots. Number one, be deliberate about your outfit, location, and setting. Make these decisions before shooting and make sure that they match each other in a way that best suits your idea. If you don't exactly have a solid idea of what you're going for, you can go on Google, Instagram, or Pinterest for inspos to look for outfits, poses, locations, and even shots. You can treat this as sort of research in order to give yourself more ideas and more concretely compose what you're trying to make. Now that I think about it, I have a lot more to say when it comes to prepping for shoots, so I'll probably just make a completely different video just for that. Anyway, back to the topic. Number two, be free with your movement. Make sure that you get moving because this allows you to get more perspective and different angles for your shots. This will allow you to have more visual interest and variation for your images. This means using high angles, low angles, doing lunges, doing squats, doing duck walks, moving close and really far from your subject. Basically, this whole thing is just gonna be a whole leg workout for you. But this effort to move in your shots will definitely show through the amount of variation that you'll get in your shots in the end. When I'm shooting, I try to keep a mental checklist if I've done enough close-ups, wides, and mediums just to make sure that I keep that variation intact. Number three, be natural with directing your poses by using using motion and emotion. Make people less stiff by directing instead of posing. Instead of telling someone exactly where to place their arms and hands and legs as if you're playing some aesthetic game of Twister, tell them to act something out, to do a certain motion back and forth over and over in a cycle. And think of an emotion for their facial expression. Maybe make them remember something that they find funny. Maybe make them think of something that might make them have a sadder expression. Depends on what you're going for, but make them think that emotion so that they can evoke it through their facial expression. This will effectively make the poses more organic as well as their facial expressions more genuine because they're actually doing a certain action and they're also coming from a place of emotion. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? What is wrong with you? You heard it here first, huh? Well, everything's wrong with you. Yeah, you're doing right. <laughs> Number four, be actively conscious of the choices that you're making by taking an extra couple seconds to polish your idea. Take a quick break and take yourself out of that zone of shooting and ask yourself, what are the little tweaks that I can do in order to improve my shots? A slight angle shift. Maybe there's that thing in the background that you didn't notice because you're so focused on your subject that you might want to accentuate a bit more or that in editing you might have to remove. Maybe there's something in their pose, or you need to fix their hair, or their outfit, or you need to switch lenses. Paying attention to these little things may save you hours on end in post trying to either fix something or trying to add something that you wish was there. Or if not, they could even just simply improve a really good shot that you already have into something even better. Number five. Be creative with your lens choices. As usual, I try to make these tips as accessible as possible. Knowing that, some of you probably don't even have a large selection of lenses, or you even only just have one. If that one lens still zooms in and out though, this tip still applies to you. Pick the right focal length and aperture for the job. Be deliberate about your choice here because a shot from a tight lens yields a very different result from a wide one. Each evoke a different feeling and sense of perspective as well as compression, so make sure that you choose the right one for your desired result. With all these components combined, you have the foundations to making yourself more confident in your shoots by having this structure on how to operate, whilst also making yourself a better photographer in the sense of having better and more consistent 
results. That being said, here are the final images from the shoot along with some cinematic b-roll. And just like that, you basically have the keys to unlocking a 97% success rate on your photo shoots. And there you go, those are my five tips that I hope you keep in mind in order to help yourself out for your next photo shoot so that you become more confident and you have better turnouts for your images. Was this helpful? Let me know in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at SentiaPoison and at Nicholas Lawlin. Once again, my name is Nicholas, thank you so much for watching, good luck on your next shoot, that's it for me for now. Cheers.